everyone. Reverend Dorr here from Faith Community Church. Welcome to our online midweek Bible study. Last week, we began a new series entitled The Signpost of Christmas, as revealed in Christmas Past, Christmas Present, and Christmas Future. We learned last week that the signpost of Christmas Past is the signpost that most people focus on when they celebrate Christmas. The birth of Jesus, born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, angels appearing to shepherds in the fields, announcing his birth, wise men making the long and arduous journey to see this newborn king, and all the sights and sounds of Christmas that we have grown to love and embrace. But who this baby truly is and why he came is so vital if we're going to understand the signpost of Christmas present the focus of this week's study. Last week, I mentioned you can't really have the manger, the signpost of Christmas past, without having the cross. The cross, beloved, is the signpost of Christmas present, the signpost that points us to the true meaning of it all. The cross is an ever-present reminder, beloved, of the reason for this season. Church, did you know that the cross speaks? Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 12, uh, 2, tells us long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, listen, he has spoken to us by his son. Beloved, in these last days speaks of the present time. In these last days, God speaks to us through his son. He speaks to us through his son's sacrifice for us on the cross. The signpost of Christmas present speaks to us as to why Jesus came to earth. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him, should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The signpost of Christmas present, beloved, serves as a constant reminder that salvation has come. Church deliverance has come. Freedom has come. The shackles of sin have been broken. The Savior of the world was then born, but now lives. Amen. John 3 verse 18 says, whoever believes in him is not condemned. Beloved, do you believe in him? Have you met the Christ? Does he dwell in your heart? Do you know him? And most important, are you known by him? These are the things we should be thinking of, beloved, in the light of Christmas present in the days in which we now live. Verse 18 goes on to tell us why. But whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Beloved, have you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ? And when you heard it, what was your response? Did you receive it or did you reject it? You know, we all have to make this choice at some time during our life. God tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. We choose life, beloved, when we choose Jesus when we choose his sacrifice for our sin, when we choose his life over our own, his will and his ways over our will and our ways. But the Bible clearly teaches us that sadly, beloved, many will not make this choice. 
John chapter 3, verse 19 goes on to tell us, and this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Church, the signpost of Christmas presents speaks to us through the cross. It is the signpost that shines light in the darkness that's in our lives. So let me ask you today, beloved, what does the cross speak to you? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 tells us, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The Amplified Version says it like this, For the message of the cross is foolishness, absurd, and illogical, to those who are perishing and spiritually dead because they reject it. But to us who are being saved by God's grace, it is the manifestation of the power of God. So how do you see the cross, beloved? The signpost of Christmas present. Do you see it as illogical and absurd, out of date and not relevant to the times? Do you see it as foolish and unrelatable, out of touch? Do you see the cross as the extension of God's grace to a lost and dying world, as the extension of God's grace to you and for you, to us who are being saved? By God's grace, it is the manifestation of the power of God. Beloved, upon hearing and believing the gospel, are you seeing the manifestation of the power of God in your life? Are you experiencing God's power to you, on you, and through you? Do you have a hunger to grow in the knowledge of God's word and his righteousness? Are you following the signpost of Christmas present, the signpost of Christmas that points us to the cross? Beloved, as believers, this should be the focus of our celebration during this glorious season. Christ the Savior is born, amen? Christ died and is now risen and is seated right now at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for us. This baby born to be king, beloved, is presently seated at the right hand of God. He is our high priest, our advocate with the Father. Church, if you have your Bible, I'd like you to please open up to the book of Hebrews, chapter 3. Here, we're given a vivid picture of the priestly role of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, says, Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest, of our confession. Notice here the two offices ascribed to Jesus. He is both apostle and high priest. As one commentator puts it, as apostle, Jesus pleads the cause of God with us. As high priest, he pleads our cause with God so powerful. The writer goes on to say in verse 2, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. Jesus, beloved, was appointed by God the Father to be the sacrifice of our sin, securing his position as our high priest. Continuing from verse 3, 
For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were spoken to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house. Ho, ho, say amen. If indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in hope. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways as I swore in my wrath. They shall not enter my rest. Now, beloved, pay attention to the warning being given here, starting with verse 12. Take care, brothers, lest any, lest there be, excuse me, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. Beloved, do you see here the warning? We're being exhorted and we're being instructed here to take care regarding sin. In other words, be aware, be watchful, be on guard. Don't let these things slip. You know, beloved, our flesh is very deceitful. We must guard our hearts against the sin that easily besets us. As Matthew Henry puts it, sin appears fair, but is vile. It appears pleasant, but is destructive. It promises much, but performs nothing. The deceitfulness of sin hardens the soul. One sin allowed makes way for another. And every act of sin confirms the habit. Let everyone beware of sin. Oh, beloved, this warning here in verse 12 of Hebrews chapter 3 is especially relevant to those of us living in the last of the last days. As we've already learned in the last of the last days, these will be days marked by a great falling away from the faith. The warning here in Hebrews in verse 12 is with regard to this apostasy. Beloved, we have to cling to our high price, priest Jesus, who is ever making intercession for us. We must cling to him each and every day. Ask him daily for the grace to live according to the truth and not according to the ways of the flesh. Beloved, be quick to repent if you do fall into sin. Remember the cross during this Christmas season and always, beloved, as the signpost of Christmas present, the signpost that points us to salvation and forgiveness. The writer of Hebrews goes on to instruct us in verse 13, to exhort one another daily that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. You know, it's so easy, beloved, through the habitual practice of sin for our hearts to become desensitized. You know, the Holy Spirit is alive in every believer's heart and he nudges us so gently 
He gives us that little check, that nudge, if we're about to do something that we shouldn't do. And we have to learn, beloved, to obey that nudge, not to dismiss it, not to harden our heart to what the Spirit of God wants to say, not to quench the moving of the Holy Spirit inside our hearts. Because if we do it long enough, we become desensitized. We become dull of hearing. We don't hear any longer that still small voice in our hearts telling us the way that we need to go. So we have to sharpen our edge when it comes to living this Christian life and adhere to the wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us that will quicken us when we're about to turn in the wrong direction. He will quicken us. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. So let's during this Christmas season become obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to the nudge of God that none of us be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. You know, church, the instruction here in Hebrews affirms our need for one another. We need to belong to a local church, beloved, in order to remain accountable to one another. You know, left to ourselves, we can become very vulnerable to Satan's attacks. The signpost of Christmas present, beloved, reminds us that our high priest works through his body. You know, beloved, the ministry of Jesus present on the earth today is the Holy Spirit working in and through the bride of Christ, the remnant of God, God's holy church. He works in us through spiritual gifts. Pastor just did an amazing teaching about the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost in our lives through the nine spiritual gifts to empower, encourage, and edify us so that we can do the works of Jesus, the works he predestined us to do. Beloved, listen. The signpost of Christmas present is this. Though Christ died on the cross, Christ is now risen. And he lives in us. He is our hope of future glory. Amen. So as we continue in this wonderful holy season of Christmas, let's not forget as we look at our little nativity scenes, you can't have the manger, beloved, unless you have the cross. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you once again for gathering us together in your holy name to grow with one another, to encourage one another, to lift you up, Lord, for you are the high and mighty God, able to heal, able to deliver, able to save. We pray, Lord God, that you would fully equip each and every one of us who know you and are known by you with the gospel message during this holy season, that we would be ready to share with those who ask what the hope is that we carry in our hearts. Help us, Lord, deliver that message with accuracy and precision, with love and with compassion. Oh, Father. Make us wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. As we gather around our family tables, Lord, during this holiday season, may we shine our light so that others may see who we are in you and the one that we serve today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, beloved. I, I'm so glad you joined this week for this wonderful teaching on the signpost of Christmas. And I pray that each week you're being edified and encouraged to celebrate the season 
with the right reason. Amen. I love you, beloved. It's such a joy to serve you each and every week. I want you to know we're so grateful for each and every one of you, for your continued support, your faithfulness to give to this ministry, your faithfulness to pray uh, for our church and for our ministry, to pray for the saints that come here, those that do not come here. We have a house of prayer here at Faith Community Church. We have an amazing team of intercessors that meet throughout the week. I want to encourage you as they put that Zoom call number up that you partake in the wonderful prayer services that we have via Zoom throughout the week. You know, um, it, it is powerful. It is life changing. It will set your day in the right direction. So I want to encourage you to be a part of prayer each and every week. For those of you who would like to give tonight to our church and ministry, I'd like you to please follow the link we provide below, or you could text the word GIVE to the number we provide below if you're watching through YouTube. Uh, I just want you to know that we're here for you. We love you. Uh, the, these links will connect you to our secure online giving platform. Every gift, no gift is too small, beloved, and I want you to know how much we appreciate your continued support. On behalf of Pastor Gary, myself, and all the elders here, thank you so much, those of you who continue to give online for automating the important. We love you guys. We love every one of you, and we're so grateful to serve you during this wonderful holy season. I want to encourage you to join us. We have in-person service each and every week, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., at 70 Winthrop Place, 11 a.m., we have our children's church ministry. I want to encourage you, come out. If we've never met, come up to us and introduce yourself. We have a loving, loving, compassionate body of believers here. We'd love to get to know you and meet you, and we'd love to help you in your walk with Christ. Together, we are made stronger. Amen? Amen. And also, don't forget, Sunday, December 25th, we're having our special Christmas service. There'll be one service that morning at 10 a.m. at 70 Winthrop Place. We have a wonderful service prepared for you, planned for you. We'd love to have you join us on Christmas morning as well. Well, God bless you, beloved. As I said, it is my honor, my privilege to serve you this meal each week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next Wednesday right here at 730. God bless you. I love you. Have a great week.